Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, members of the youth choir. I sat there and I felt good, very good within myself. I said to myself, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is alive in Africa. When I see the army of young people singing for the Lord and a large amount of even younger ones that are coming up in the church to give God thanks and praise for our children and our youth. Amen? Tremendous, 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 tremendous. And I just want to encourage you to remain in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you so much. So camp meeting is about... Thank you, guys. That sounds good. Camp meeting is about us as a family coming together to feed on spiritual food. And of course, we can get some physical food as well. Some Bugali and Sukuma Wiki. <laughs> and some stews and some stuff. But more importantly than the food is physical food, that is, is us coming together to feast together as a body of Christ. And I think we have been doing that all week. Were you blessed this morning? Amen. We do not want any beep beep at the pearly gates and we are grateful for a number of individuals who have decided to give their hearts to the Lord in baptism come Sabbath. Sabbath will be a day of rejoicing in this church and so we're, for those of you watching online wherever you are on Sabbath you want to make sure you come on down to Nairobi Central we will find space for you if you are in town as we draw the curtains down on Camp Meeting 2023. For this evening, tomorrow when you come, we'll be dealing with, we only have one service tomorrow morning. When you come, we're dealing with the last sign. For this evening, we're dealing with the last church. The last church. So why don't you bow your heads with me as we invite God's presence. Oh, my Father, this is a very important subject. And again, we cannot open your words without asking for your help. So please, Lord, please, come by and open up our minds and open up our understanding. Again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The last church. More importantly than the last church is really the, the sign of the end. That's what we're going to look at. The sign of the end in the last church. Sign of the end in the... And by the way, it may sound very preposterous to, to talk about the sign of the end in the last church because we talk about the sign of the end in the world. There are so many signs of the end in the world and we spoke about them last in the evening. But did you know that in prophecy there are some signs of the end inside the church? That's what we're going to search for. So the Bible has really provided a vivid description of what the church of God will look like in the, in the last days before the end comes. Bible tells us what the church will look like, what the church will feel like in the very last days. And what we will be doing is to, is to check that to see what, what the church we have now, whether it fits Bible description. The prophetic description allows us an opportunity to compare actual experience of the church in the 21st century with those that are described in Bible. 
So, in other words, put another way. Bible describes what the church will look like and feel like in the last days. You are going to look at those and then compare it with the church today and then confirm whether or not we are in the last days. Is that all right? Yeah, good. That's what we're doing this evening. Okay. So, if you study your Bible very well, you will come across two depictions in prophecy or in Bible of the last day church. One is the ten virgins. You remember we talk about them? They symbolize the church in the last day waiting for Christ. The last day church members. We spoke about them. And the second depiction of the church in the last day is Laodicea. Yeah, Laodicea. Two of them. What is shockingly frightening is that both, both depictions, the two sets of prophetic depictions of the last day church, they, all, they both have the same problem. Both have the same problem. It's a last day problem, a last day church problem. What's the problem? Well, both of them, help me preach, both of them, Lack the Holy Ghost. Yep. Both of them. That's the problem in the very last. The church that will exist just before Jesus comes will lack the Holy Ghost. Now, we'll prove it. So let's see if we can dig inside the last day church. Oh, by the way, this is one of the last day church. Nice? Nice. Isn't that wonderful? Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Maybe one day, Nairobi Central, <laughs> will look like this, Pastor Nambuchi. While you're looking at it, compare that with how Jesus started his church. And ask yourself the question, when Jesus started the church of the living God, he, did he have anything like that? You know where the people sat to eat lunch? The Bible says, on grass. You know what he had for his pulpit? Peter's boat, sometimes. One time Zacchaeus had to go up in a tree. Let's see if we go in the last day, church. In the book of Revelation... In the book of Revelation, you would have come across seven churches, yes? Seven churches. In other words, there's a series of sevens in Revelation. And I think on Sabbath morning, I'll be dealing with one of those sevens, the seventh seal. But right now, I want to talk about the seven churches. Most of you would have read Revelation. You're familiar with them. Their, their names are listed there. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and the last one was Laodicea. God instructed John on the Isle of Patmos to write a letter to each of these churches. These were seven physical, act, actual physical churches that existed at the time when John was on the Isle of Patmos. They were located strategically in Asia Minor, which is now called Turkey. They were located in Turkey. They're right there on the map. And they begin with Ephesus number one, Smyrna number two, Pergamos, those three on the left. And then Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea on the right, those four. They were all in close proximity. And God chose these seven churches. And you wonder why these seven churches. I'm going to stay with me now. Because in each of these seven churches that, that existed at the time when John was on the Isle of Patmos, each of them had seven different spiritual 
experience, is the church still with me? Yes. Each of them had seven different, different spiritual experience. God decided to use them to illustrate or to prophesy what the church, the New Testament church of God, what the church of God, the, ex, the spiritual experience that his church that Jesus started will go through between the time when he left the church in the hands of the apostles to the time when he come back to find the church at the end of age. Is the church with me? So let me repeat that for you. So the seven churches in Asia Minor represent seven distinct spiritual experience that God's people will experience from the time Jesus left the earth to the time when he comes back again to collect us. Are you with me? Good. So each of these churches represents one of those spiritual experiences. There are seven. So for that time period, Jesus left at Ephesus, number one. That's when the church was wonderful and sweet and all of that stuff, good, pure, right? That was the first church. The spiritual energy on the church was good. Anybody ever, are you, here, are you guys hearing me? The spirituality of the church was good, was solid, says the book of Acts. They were growing daily, yes? They were going so fast that they didn't have place to put people. Yep, because the Holy Ghost was in the church. The church was exploding and things were great. That's Ephesus. Then, then after Ephesus, we have Smyrna, which had a different spiritual experience. And as the church grows, little corruption comes in the church, little corruption comes in the church, and we see different experiences in the church all the way down to Laodicea. Now, if you understand that, if you understand that, then you'll understand my next point. There is no eighth church. There is no eighth church. Watch this, watch this. Time ends in which church? Seventh church. Yes. There is no eighth. Now, all eyes on me. If we are living in church number five, then we don't have to worry about Jesus coming. There are two other churches before he comes. Are you with me? But if we are living in the seventh church, then there is no eighth church because this is the church of the end. We, I have a little news for you. It's on the board. You and I, fortunately or unfortunately, our membership is in the seventh church. This one. If I had a choice, I wouldn't want my membership in the seventh church. <laughs> if I had a choice. Anybody know which church I'd like to be in? I, I, I would like, I would prefer my membership to be in Philadelphia, Pastor Ambushi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good church. This church, I, I wouldn't want my membership in it. But, but I was not born in the time of the Philadelphia experience. I'm born here. And so whether I like it or not, my membership is in church number seven, and your membership is in seventh church. And this is, which means that we are the last set of church people before the Lord comes. See the point? Yep. And therefore, <laughs> and therefore, whether you like it or not, we are stuck in church number seven. It is in this church that God will come and find us. I am bringing this to your attention 
Because I want you to understand how close we are to the end of the world and the second coming of Christ. That's what I'm trying for you to do. Okay. So, Brother Preacher, why don't you want your membership in this church? Well, well, God, God, send a letter to the seventh church, to the members of the seventh church, And brethren, when we opened the letter and read it, it didn't sound too good. It didn't sound too good. God, who is coming for the church, sent a letter to the church. And when we read the letter, it did not sound too good. I wanted to move my I wanted to move my membership. <laughs> Is the church with me? When we read the letter came from heaven, I want to move my membership immediately, but I'm in problem. Why? There is no eighth church. So so we're gonna read the letter from God to to us. To us. We're just going to read it through first, and then we'll talk about it. Here's a letter. I'm in Revelation 3, verse 14. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, right? These, this is, the, this is how the letter starts. The author of the letter introduces himself. These are the words of the amen. What does amen mean? Do you say amen when you're starting something or when you finish it? When you finish it. So the author introduced himself as the finisher. Does that make sense? The amen. You know, we never call God the amen, did we? No, we call him all kind of names. But in this letter, he introduced himself as the amen, which means that this is it. Done. Finish. Terminated. What do we say in Swahili? Finish. Wicca. Wisha. We shall. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, the author, this is amazing. The letter writer introduces himself as the amen. That's the first signal that everything is over. This is the fin, this is end, this is it, terminado, done. The amen. No more. The faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. That's how he introduced himself. Okay? What's the letter? What's the message to the church? Here's it. I know your deeds. I know the work that you do. I know your evangelism. I know the nice choirs that you have. I know the track distribution. I know the camp meetings. I know the work that you do. Yeah? But in my opinion, you are neither cold nor hot. This is the letter, and the church member listening to the pastor reading the letter coming from God. It says, and I wish, this is God, I wish you were either one or the other, either cold or hot, which means God prefers if we were cold. Oh, <laughs> still didn't get it. God says a cold church is in a better place than a lukewarm church. Oh, you still don't get it. You still don't get it. Let me help you. When people are consuming anything, right, a drink, they prefer a hot drink or a cold drink, but a lukewarm drink is not so good. God says... I prefer you were either cold or hot. Uh -huh. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Do you want membership in that church? Can you be comfortable in that church? 
I'm reading the letter. You say I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you don't realize, help me read. You don't realize that you are wretched. You are pitiful. You are poor. You are blind and you are naked. I'm reading the letter. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness. And by the way, and buy some eye salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Verse 19. Those whom I love, I rebuke them, and discipline them. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. This is the letter I'm reading. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in, eat with, with him, with that person, and they with me. I'm reading the letter. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, the letter says, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. The letter says, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Now, after getting a letter from, that, um, from heaven that reads like that, are you comfortable with your membership in this church? Huh? No. Neither am I. Neither am I. Here's what Ellen White has to say. <laughs> Here's what Ellen White has to say about this church, this last day church for which you and I have membership in. Here's what she says. The Laodicean message has its application in the conditions that exist in the church of God when? Today. Today. She, she continues. Many of God's people have strengthened themselves in their own way, followed the impulses of their own minds, and have grown indifferent to the admonition of the Lord. She continues. Many who were once firm believers in the truth have become what? Careless in regard to their spiritual welfare and are yielding without opposition. Look at her words. In the last days, church members in the last day church are yielding without opposition to Satan's plot. She wrote that in 1912. I wonder what you would have written about today. So she says, that this last day church, this seventh church, has its application on us. Here's, here's the SDA Bible commentary on this one. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, does it have anything to do with this Laodicean church that we just read about? Here's what your Bible commentary, SDA Bible commentary, has to say about it. Here's it. Let me read. For more than a century, Seventh-day Adventists have recognized that the message of the Laodicean also has special application to themselves. Ooh. Ooh. That's the official position of our church. That what we have just read in that letter has special application to us. Whoa. Oh, oh, can you sleep comfortable tonight? Oh, oh, that's what camp meeting is for. It's for us to look at these things. Yeah? Yes, dear Bible commentary, volume 7, page 761 continues. Let's read together. It says, The Laodicean message may be thought of as being applying in a special sense to the church from when? From 1844 to when? Close of time. So now what we know is that in the, the, the church next door us was Philadelphia. Well, that, that period came to an end in 1844. And 1844 starts the period of the last church. 
last church. That means, how long ago was 1844? 100 and so many years ago. Which means by now, we are supposed to be at the end of the last church. Is the church with me? Are we together? Yes. I want to give you a sense of how close we are. We're not at the beginning phase of the last church. We are supposed to be now at the ending phase of the last church. Which means, I'm trying to say to you, which means that time has really gone and the, 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 the full time is gone. We're on the overtime on this match. So, brother preacher, what is, oh Lord have mercy, what is the problem in this church? How is it, brethren, if you're sleeping, wake up. Question. How is it that God's church finds itself in such spiritual decay at the very moment when God is coming for it? How is it that after so many years, over 2,000 years since Christ came here and started, how is it that at the moment when Christ is coming, when the world is at end, when the church should be on fire, how is it that God's church is at the very worst condition than any of the other churches in Revelation chapter, um, chapter, chapter 3? How come? There's not another church of the seven church that is in a worse spiritual condition than this one. None of them has God threatened to spit out of his mouth. As bad as some of them were. How? How? What's the problem? How do we reach here? And the problem is because we are at the, because we are tinkling on the edge of time. Will we have time to recover before the Lord comes? That's the problem. Will we have time to recover? Because we are on the very edge. And so, and so my job, therefore, is to, is to let Nairobi members understand the spiritual dilemma that we are in because we are at the end of the journey. The Lord is supposed to be coming and picking us up. But the condition that we are in, God is, is giving God upset stomach. All the Bible study we do, all the preaching we do, all the stuff, all the knowledge that we have and the truth that we say we have, we're in problems. Por qué? Why? So what's the problem? Lukewarm. 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 Lukewarm is where we, watch me, lukewarm is where we sleep. Because we're not too hot, you can't sleep. We're not too cold, oh, you can't sleep. Is the church with me? Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. I hope you get in the preacher. Lukewarm. Lukewarm temperature is where we relax. Amen? You see the problem? Yeah, lukewarm is where we are okay. Lukewarm is where we have no complaint. Lukewarm is where we think we are all right. Lukewarm. Spiritually, lukewarm. Lukewarm is when we think we're doing great. Lukewarm. And it's hard to come out of lukewarm. So what's the problem? Here's it. First problem on the board, Jesus says. He diagnosed the church. You know, he diagnosed the problem in the church. You, help me read. You say, come on, I'm not hearing you. You say, I know I didn't hear the guys on the balcony. You say, that's the first problem. First problem. First problem in last day church. Last day church members think that they are rich. That's, that's, that's where the problem is. And by the way, it's not just physical richness. They think they're also spiritually rich. But it is a fact that the last day church is physically rich. Amen? Yeah, yeah. We just show you, we just show you, we just show you, we just show you, um, yeah. Last, this, this is what most last day church looks like. Physically rich. Yeah? All the churches are getting rich. Look, look, at, look at this chapel. 
The people who started here, if they were to resurrect and see what we have become, they say, what in the world? Everywhere you go, we build a nicer church. Am I right? Oh, yeah, yeah, sophisticated church. You go into some church, you're even afraid to sit down. Yeah, rich. But not, not with, with hanging chandeliers and golden trims and rich. We, we have become rich. We, 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 we've, I, have, I have leather back Bible, y'all, with my name printed in gold. C compare that to the world and see who had to tear out a Bible page and stitch it in their clothes, living in the mountain. Is the church with me? Rich, I, I have different translations. If I don't like one, I can switch to the other. We, 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 we're spiritually rich. We, we, we say to ourselves, we, we have the truth. We, we think, we think, and by the way, spiritual rich means we think we have a lot of faith. We think we have a lot of righteousness. We think we are very faithful. We are very righteous. We are ready for the second coming of the Lord. Well, that's where the problem lies. You say you are rich. You say so. Well, we'll go look at the text. Uh, and you have acquired uh, uh, wealth and do not need anything. You think you're okay. You think you're ready for the pickup. But Jesus says, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I have a question for the church. How is it that the church's perception of itself is so drastically and diametrically different from God's perception of the church? Come on, come on, stay with the preacher. How is it that God's perception of the church is so different from the perception that the church has of itself. Because the church thinks it's doing well. But when you check God, God says, you wretched, you pitiful, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. So now we have a problem now we have a problem. And that's why God sent the letter to say, hey, the perception you have of yourself is false. And the security you have, the spiritual security you have is false. It's false. You say you're rich. You say you're rich. And I'm going to tell this church, Nairobi Central, and those of you watching online, it's the same problem the virgins had. Same problem. What problem? They thought they were okay. Is the church with me? Oh, stay with me. They thought, all of them thought, wise and foolish, they thought they were, when they checked themselves, they thought they were okay. Those who were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them and they thought it was okay because I have lamb. And because my lamp is giving some light, they thought they had a false sense of spiritual security. They had a warped concept of their spiritual condition. And so they felt safe when they said, I'm doing well, I'm not, I'm not cheating, I'm on my wife. I'm not drinking, I'm not smoking, I'm doing well. Took no oil. But the wives took oil in their lamps. With their lamps. Same problem. Text says, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and said, what temperature do people sleep again? Lukewarm. Lukewarm. That's what the problem is. And that's why the last day church is caught in the spiritual malaise that we are in. And I'm worried about it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. When I, when I did an examination, uh, if, if you ever do a, 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 an autopsy on these, these church, three ingredients that the last day church lack. Number one, here's it. I counsel you to buy from me what? Gold refined in fire so you can become rich because you're really not rich. 
Really not rich. The next thing God says, I counsel you to get what? Is what? White raiment to wear so you can cover your nakedness because you think you have enough white raiment and you don't have any. And the third one God says you need is salve to put on your eyes so you can see. So what is this gold? What is this white clothes? And what is this salve that the church lacks? That God points out the church need in the very last day? Here are they. Number one. The gold, the gold, says Ellen White, that is lacking is what? Faith in God. Oh, you still don't understand that. Compare, read your Bible, and compare the faith that the people had back then in Bible days to our times. You know, um, in the Cayman Islands, we have, a, we have a high school, an Adventist high school, pastor, and called Cayman Academy. And the conference office is very close by the high school. I was president of the, con of the conference at the time, and one of the, teacher, one of the teachers called over to the conference office and they send the call to my office. And the teacher said, um, Mr. President, <laughs> we need a little help over the school. Okay, what's happening? She says, I have a group of 11 graders. These are seniors. And they have a lot of questions asking about the church. And I don't think I can answer them. So will you come over and give us some help? I said, okay. I went over, and of course, the classroom was filled with 11 graders. These are 15, 16 year old. And so the first, the first one shoot up his, his hand. He said, he, said, he said, Pastor, I have a question. She said, when I read my Bible, I saw where, I saw where the apostles, you know, went to visit sick people, pray over them, and even put their hand on them, and heal them. And they're all healed. Then she says, how come when you guys pray over sick people, they still get sick? <laughs> oh. <laughs> how come when the pastors pray over the, the folks, the folks don't get healed right away? When you compare the faith that folks had back then, and they were ordinary people like us, amen? When Elijah prayed and locked up heaven for three and a half years, James says he was an ordinary man like us. Where is the faith of our fathers in the last day church? Where is it? What makes, what do we, why, what makes us think that the faith that these guys had back then, okay, was so great, and they, they, they make it into the kingdom, why do we think that it, we don't have to have that kind of faith to make it? Lacking. Gold tried in fire. Um, servant of the Lord says, what God is saying in the last days, the last set of church members will have absolutely no faith in him. Lacking. The second thing that was lacking, oh, this will blow your mind. What does the white raiment represent? The righteousness of Christ. Hey, here's what God says. When I look down the road to the last set of church members, just before I come, I realize that they have no righteousness in them. But they're in church. A shortage of the righteousness of Christ in last day members. What? And then the last, the last, the last thing that was short in the last day church is this one. I solve. What's the I solve again? Oh, that's a big one. What did we learn about him this morning? What did we learn about him? You cannot. Pass through the pearly gates 
and lift you up the Holy Spirit. And to my shock and horror, God says, when I look down at the last set of church members, one of the things that will be missing among them is the Holy Spirit. So now I have a question for us, because I'm in this church too, you know. I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself, because my membership is in this church. So <laughs> I have a question to ask. How, let me talk to the choir, how on God's earth are we going to make it into the kingdom of heaven if we don't have no faith in God, if we have no righteousness in us, and if we have no Holy Spirit? How are we going to make it? Can I preach our way to the kingdom? Can I sing our way to the kingdom? How are we going to make it? See, you see that dilemma that we're in? We're in a huge spiritual dilemma. And if you're scared, I'm happy. Because I'm scared too. We have a reason, we have good reason to be scared. Hang on, hang on, I'm going somewhere. Here's the danger. Ha! Here's the danger. Big, big danger. Big, big danger. What's the danger? Help me, what's the danger? The church has no oil, but it is still... Ah! Oh, Lord of mercy. Help me, you still don't get it. Let me level it. The church has no Holy Ghost, but it is still functioning. Still have nice programs, still active, still going on. Still, we still have service every Sabbath. We still have nice pro. We still coordinate our service. We still have track distribution. We still have camp meeting. We still, we still, we, the, the church is functioning, y'all. <laughs> the lack of the Holy Spirit doesn't stop the church from functioning. So how come, on what basis is it functioning? Oh, it is functioning on its experience. Because it knows how to keep church. Oh, you still don't get it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put it, let me put it where you can get it. So let me put it where you can get it. Hey, 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 stay with me, stay with me. When, you remember, I, I'm going back to this over and over and over and over and over. When Christ came the first time, the church was functioning. Yes? Agree? Yes. But the church had absolutely no Holy Ghost in it. One of the, stay with me, one of the most stunning. By the way, every one of you should read this half ages, you know. Make sure you do. One of the most stunning insight Ellen White documented in the book This Half Ages was this. She says, she says, at the dedication of Jesus, baby Jesus, Joseph and Mary came into the temple bringing their little baby to be dedicated. Is the church with me? Brought the baby up to the priest. She says, listen to the preacher. She said, the priest, collect the baby. Write his name on the scroll. Are you with me? Did his ritual that he has to do. Hand the baby back to Mary. And did not even know that he held God in his arms. The priest, the pastor of the church. Is the church still with me? The pastor, as far as he's concerned, was just another baby. And one of the reasons why, because of the gifts that the couple brought for sacrifice. They brought two turtle doves, which is the gift of the poorest of the poorest of the poorest of the poor. And he's the pastor of the church. 
held God in his arms and there's nothing in him that sensitizes No spirit of the living God. Yet he's running church. When they finish the dedication and was going out through the door, they met an old couple, Simeon. Even before Simeon get a look at the baby, the spirit of the living God came down on him. The old man eyes have seen the consolation of Israel. Let now thy servant departeth in peace. Is the church with me? An old lay member. But the leader of the church did not even recognize he held God in his arms. But they were still running church. No, that should scare you. And what God says in the letter, in the last days, church is still going to go on. Because we know how to run church. We know how to sing. And we know how to preach. And we know how to have a good time in the Lord. No Holy Spirit. No righteousness. No faith in God. That's, that's what God sees in the last day church. Here's how Paul puts it. Paul puts it, the last day members, they'll have a form of godliness. They will choreograph the nicest service. They'll put on the nicest liturgical regalia, head stuff, and walk with the holy oil. You have the nicest thing. You have the form. But deny what? The power thereof. And then Paul says, from such turn away. In verse 7, he says, these people in the last days, they are ever learning, but never able to <laughs> but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Deception. 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 But I want you to, <laughs> I want you to take note of the letter. That came to us from God. It ends with an appeal. Praise the Lord. God always provide hope for his people. Amen. No matter how bad we go, God always extend the lifeline. So the letter, as bad as the letter was, it ends with a little hope. Here's the appeal. Here's the appeal. Here's the appeal. Those whom, I, come on, everybody read with me. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. That's what we do with our children, right? We love them, that's why we discipline them. And then here's the appeal. So the, God says to the church, be earnest and do what? Repent, repent. Which means, which means, in God's eyes, the last day church members need to go into repentance. But, what? but who would repent if you don't think you have anything to repent about? See the problem? That's why God had to point out our weaknesses and then says, if you want to pass through the pearly gates, what you have is not enough. Your knowledge is not enough. Your church practice is not enough. You are short in faith and you are short in righteousness. That's why you criticize each other and you malice each other. You are short in righteousness and you are short in the Holy Ghost. Repent if you want to pass through the pearly gates. And so this is a last ditch effort that God is making, that the amen is making to get somebody saved out of the church. Here's the appeal. It's a final call from God. Here I stand, God says. Behold, I stand. Where? At the door and knock. Um, I'm going to leave a little secret with you because I'm soon gone. Imagine today's Thursday. When you read Bible, don't read it when you're tired. You know, a lot of Adventists, it's Friday evening, they read Bible. 
worst time. Why? Why? You're at the end of the week and you are tired. So they read Bible and they're falling asleep over it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Read Bible when you are fresh. Go to sleep. Wake up. Your mind is clear and fresh. When you read Bible like that, you will stop at the full stop. That says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And then you have to ask a question. Don't pass it. Which door, Lord, are you standing? The church door or my heart's door? Which door? Well, well, some people may say it doesn't matter. And maybe it doesn't matter. The other question is more important. Okay, come with me. Come with me. If you say it is the church door, since the letter came to the church, the all I stand at the church door and knock, stay with the preacher. If it is the church door, then come with me. I'm in some dilemma right here. The next line says, if anyone hears me, hears my voice, and opens the door, Oh, so come, 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 come. Are you ready for this? If God is outside knocking, well, if God is knocking on the door, where is he, inside or outside? So, how is it that we're running church and God is outside. Hey, 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 we have a problem. How is it that we are running church, but God is outside knocking? And by the way, if that door is the door of your heart, how is it that you're a member of the church, you are a child of God, and God is outside? Now you understand why we don't have no faith, we don't have no Holy Spirit, we don't have any righteousness, because God is outside. And we think that he is inside. False perception of ourselves. False perception of ourselves. And by the way, that door, the handle is on the inside which means only you can open. So I'm going to stay out here and knock. If any man open, I will come in and eat with that person. I underline that. Oh, Holy Spirit, just download something in my brain. Can I share it with you? Let me share it with you. Please note the text. The letter was written to the church at large. Amen? But the appeal move from the corporate level to the to the individual level which means God is no longer interested in, in, in saving a corporate church oh God is now interested in the individual soul can you see that Yes, 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 yes. Hey, salvation, salvation has gone single digit. Individual soul. Individual soul. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why when you read Bible, you must read Bible. The Bible makes sense. The Bible now makes sense. That's why, that's why before the Lord comes, he will dispatch his angels. The Bible says he will dispatch his angels and they will go all over to collect his people. He says, Two shall be at the, at the, don't remember the text, at the mill, am I right? Grinding, one shall be taken and the other one left because salvation has gone single digit. Hey, 
hey, hey. So don't, be, don't believe that because your mama and your papa are good Christian, you are going to make it in the kingdom of God. God has no family plan. You hear the preacher, you hear the preacher. God has no family plan. Every man going to be saved by himself. Is the church with me? Had he a family plan, Mrs. Lot would be saved because she married to a righteous man. Had he had a family plan, Esau would be saved. He came from the same placenta of Jacob. Individual. Individual. One will be taken, and the other one left. That's why I tell people, don't let nobody stop you from giving your heart to the Lord. No mama, no papa, no husband, no brother, nobody! It's you and God alone. So whoever opens when I call, I will come in, eat with that person, and they with me. Can the church say amen? <coughs> yep, 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 yep. Hey, hey, hey. You know, we were... We were at the back today. The pastors can bear this out. And a little boy said to me, yeah, um, I want to be baptized on Sabbath, but I have to get the approval of my mom. And it broke my heart. And I understand where it's coming from. And I understand the culture. But the Bible is above culture. That little soul has the authority to give his heart to his creator. Is the church with me? Yes, 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 yes. To the creator. Because when he dies, if he's nine years of age, he alone going into that casket. No mom or papa going to join me. What's the result of the appeal? Jesus made the appeal in the letter. Oh, did you see the appeal? We just talked about it. You will I stand at the door and knock. Repent and come and I will sup with you. That's the appeal. That's the appeal. Question is, did anybody from the church respond to that appeal? Well, the letter closes. Revelation closes and we didn't get an idea of any direct response. But I spotted two texts in Revelation that gave me some idea that somebody responded to the appeal. Praise the Lord. In other words, as bad as things are, somebody from Nairobi will be going home to the kingdom. Will it be you? So, so let me give you an idea of who I see respond. I'm in Revelation. I'm in chapter 7. I'm in verse 4. And it says, help me read, help me read, help me read. I heard the number of those who were sealed. How, how, what's the number? 144,000 from where? All the tribes of the children of Israel. And somebody said, hold on preacher. Is this 144, literal or physical? And Ellen White said, shut your mouth. We're not interested in whether it is literal or physical. I have my own view. But I keep it to myself. If you want, I can share it with you. Would you? I know you'd want to know. So because of my hermeneutical principle in interpreting, in interpreting prophecy, when the whole context is symbolic, then very likely the message is symbolic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she says, we need not get into any debate about this and I'm guided by her. Amen? Yes, 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 yes. But hey, okay, okay, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. Watch me, watch me. Even, even if it is literal, even if it is literal, I am still not too worried. 144,000 is not much. You guys have 50 million people here, right? Oh. 
So it's kind of rough to squeeze in. <laughs> oh man, it's kind of rough to squeeze in um, the 144,000 if it is literal. Yeah. So I was not happy with that figure and I kept searching. Lord, is there, <laughs> is there any other indication of anybody else? Responded to appeal. And I stumbled, I stumbled on verse 9. Verse 9 says, Help me read. After these things, I looked, Amen, and behold, Amen, a great, a great multitude which no one could number where they come from. All nations, including all Kenyans. Every tribe, the Kishi tribe and the Lao. Is Lao? Loa, Loma? What's the name of the tribe? Loa. And every, every nation, tribe, people, and tongue. A, a number that no one could number. Amen. And the Bible said, they stood before the throne and before the lamb and, and bless the Lord. Look at what they had on. Something that was missing in the last day church. What did they have on? White robes. Praise the Lord. And palm branches in their hand. Somebody is going home to heaven. Hallelujah. I have the evidence on the board. I have the evidence. Somebody responded to the last letter. Amen. I declare myself, if you don't find me in the 144, I'm here. <laughs> How many of you are going to be in the number? Raise your hand. Oh Lord, I want to be in the number. I'm here. That's why we have a baptism on Sabbath morning. Amen? Yeah, we are going to be in the number. So you get the idea then. I'm wrapping this up. This is my time is up. You're getting the idea then. Even though the church on a whole is completely messed up on a corporate level, God decides to come down to the individual. Amen? And out of it, he'll pull out a remnant. Ah, out of it, one by one. He'll pull out the faithful. He'll pull out those who put their trust in him. He'll pull out those who responded to the call. Hey, he'll put out those, wash them and gave them the power of the Holy Spirit and somebody will be going home. So I was, I could, I could end the sermon here, but I, I must tell you, I was a little, I was a little disappointed. I was happy when I saw that large number of those who will be saved. And then I became curious about the number of those who will be lost. I wish I didn't go looking because I get depressed. Revelation 20 verse 7, give me a peep into that number. Those who did not respond to the appeal, those who stayed in their lukewarm position, those who felt that they are right. Text says, now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be loosed from his prison. Verse 8, and will go out and deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. These are on Satan's side. How big is the number? Those number whose number is as the sand of the sea. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. A lot of people will not make it. A lot. Many, 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 many more will be lost than those who will be saved. Oh, we saw it in Noah's days. Whole planet, only eight people saved. We saw it in Sodom and Gomorrah. Only Lot and the girls came out. The whole city was gone. I was, I was troubled by the number. And I wondered, will there be in that number people who I know? I wonder if anybody I know will be in that number. I wish to God it doesn't happen. 
I wonder if there's any family member will be in that number. What about my colleagues? Will they be in that number? What about my schoolmate? What about my, my neighbors? What about my co-workers? I wonder, is there anybody that I know will be in the number? In that number? I was a little depressed by it. Yeah. I was a little depressed by it. And so I... I want, I want to end peaceful this evening. I want to finish right here this evening. And say to you, this is the last church. There'll be no more. The people that will be saved will be saved out of this church. We will form the bride of Christ. And my appeal to you as I close, <clears throat> my appeal to you as I close, in the name of Jesus, he says, I am standing I am knocking I'm not forcing my way I'm not swindling you. I am knocking. If you hear my voice, open. I will come in. I'll sit with you. And I'll eat with you. <clears throat> and I'm wondering tonight, is there anybody in this church? Is there anybody in this church is there anybody listening via the internet? Is there anybody listening to my voice who has not yet accepted the Lord Jesus Christ? This is the moment to do it now. Why, preacher? We are at the very end. This last phase of the church started from 1844, which is a long hundred and odd years now, which means that we're about at the point where the skies will be open. By the way, Sabbath morning, yeah, 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 we're gonna dig down into that stuff, where the skies will be open and the trumpet will sound it. God help you wherever you are in that trumpet sound if your heart is not right with God. So I'm gonna invite my choristers to sing I will not have a long appeal like Jesus says. I'll stand at the door and knock. And I'm going to open it up to you. If you have not yet given your heart to the Lord, tonight is the night to do that. He says, come, buy of me. Come to me, surrender your heart to me, and I will give you the gold, the faith that you need and the righteousness that you need. And I will give you the Holy Spirit that you need. But you have to come. So I'm going to invite this congregation to stand. Rise with me. Can you rise with me? Can you rise with me? Rise with me. He says, I stand at your door and knock. You anybody? Decide this coming Sabbath. This world to I'm gonna give my heart to the Lord. I'm be in that number. I invite you to come on down and join me as we wrap up this service today. Hear anybody? Hear anybody sing that song? Time after time. Hear anybody? He waited. Before Can I invite my pastors to join me? Is there anybody? He's waiting Richard, this coming again. Sabbath This coming Sabbath I'm going to give the heart to my Lord I want to be in the number Is there anybody? Come to Every night I come and call you come. If you came before, come again If you came before, come again This coming Sabbath Will be your decision Anybody else? 
there anybody else? If you take there anybody else? one step towards the city of another person. my friend, Just reach out. I want to be in the number. Say excuse to your friend and come. Say excuse to your friend and come. This coming Sabbath will be our baptism. Here another and all of your darkness will end. God bless you. 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 Time after time is here another. Time after time. We're at the end. We're at the end. He has waited. Maybe on the balcony wherever you are. Excuse and come. God bless you. God bless you. He's waiting, He's waiting again. again oh, to see Here another. Here another. To open the door. Here another. Oh, how? Oh, how Here another. God bless you, my son. Come, come. Here another. Here another. You all I stand at the door and knock. Anybody open? Anybody open? God bless you, my sister. Anybody open? You gotta open, you gotta open, and I've come. Here another. God bless you, God bless you. Here another. You gotta open, you gotta open. There's nothing in this world to keep you. to him for time of the time time of the time time of the time time of the time after time he has been calling he has waited before and now he's waiting again I did promise you I will not be keeping you long tonight. But the letter, the letter was not written to the government of Kenya. It was written to the church members. The angel of the church the letter was addressed to us we who have been already baptized God is saying I'm seeing problems in your spiritual condition and I don't want you to feel safe because you're a member of the church So he says, there are some stuff that I see that are lacking in the hearts of last day church members that is going to put them in trouble. So he dispatched the letter to put the church on notice and give the church the last opportunity to make it right. And I am saying on this appeal, as the same God record this meeting tonight, as members of the church, you may have been baptized many years ago or just baptized. But again, I call tonight, if you sense a shortage in any of those three things, God says, come and repent. Come to me, humble yourself. Repent, and I will provide you with the shortage, whether it's the faith or it's the righteousness 
or it's the Holy Spirit. So we're going to sing this stanza. If you take one step towards the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms open wide. I'm appealing to church members now. If you sense a shortage in these three ingredients, the letter was sent to you as a last warning from heaven. And God says, repent and come. Because the challenge is that you are going to feel as if you're okay, but you are not. So we're going to take this last stanza, and I'm going to ask members of this church, if you sense a shortage of any of those ingredients, Jesus says, come. I am knocking at your door. If you humble yourself, open your heart, surrender again to me, I will top you up in the areas in which you are short so that you can be in the number. Let's sing the song. And I open this altar as Christ opened his arms. To whoever will, may come. If you take one step towards my Savior, my Son, you'll find his arms open. And after this, we will pray and go home. Here we go. If you take one step towards if you sense Savior, my shortage of any of these, faith in God, righteousness of Christ, Holy Ghost power. After time, he has waited, waited before. before, and now, and now he's waiting again. He's waiting again. He sent shortage to see any of the three I know willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants! The time of the time. Time after time. Oh, he has waited before. And now, now he is waiting again. To see if you're willing to open the door. For you, any of these things for me, come. Come. and the Lord's for any of the three things. The letter was sent to the church, the letter was sent to the church for you and for me. Those who came up early, 
make a decision that this coming Sabbath they would like to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, have their names written down in glory, and wait the call from heaven. Praise the Lord. We thank you. And I invite Pastor Ambuji to pray for the second set of people who came up, indicating, Lord, I sense a shortage of these critical ingredients in my personal life, and I'm not taking any risk. I am now coming to you because you invite me, and I ask you to fill me up with these ingredients so it can be well with my soul. Two prayers. Our heads are bowed as we pray. Let us pray. Wonderful Father, you have spoken to us this evening, and you are good to your children that you give us information for your last charge. We have realized that we need to choose to be either cold or hot. Your children moved here at first, saying that they want to change their relationship with you, Amen. to accept you publicly by going to the waters of baptism. Lord, I pray that as they wait for the waters, Lord, may you cleanse their hearts and may you write their names in the book of life. Amen. You are a mighty God. Whoever comes to you, you promise us that you will not cast away. Receive the children of yours. Let your Holy Spirit move with them each and every time that you may bless them, you may take care of them. Lead them until they reach the waters. The decision that they have made today, may it be a permanent decision, leading to everlasting life. Amen. The challenges they will ever meet on the way, may you help them through the power of your spirit that they may be able to overcome. They, may, they will meet, meet temptations, but let these temptations be lighter because they will have the power of the Holy Spirit. Mighty God, some of them are very young. The future is still long. Mm -hmm. But Lord, you will walk with them throughout, all the way. May your will be done. Glory be to you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, as I add my voice to the prayer of your servant, we stand before you to express our gratitude for having spoken to us, to each one of us in a very distinct manner. Looking at the last church, Father, you have made references in your word when you pleaded with mankind. The time of no, you pleaded with the rest of humanity to heed your warnings and come to the ark. The time of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, you pleaded with the people mm -hmm. of Lot and the people of Sodom. But Lord and his daughters accepted you. And Father God, in the time of Jacob, he had to make a declaration to his family to make a decision to cast out anything that is not godly. And they cast all the idols before they came to Bethel. And this week, Father, you have spoken to us in a very distinct manner. Tonight, you have spoken to us about the last church. And we have examined our lives to see the status we are in. And there are some ingredients in life, in our Christian journey, that are missing. When this call was put forward, each one of us has examined it. And we have responded to your call 
for we have found things that are missing in our lives. Mm. And Lord, we sense if we don't come to you, who else shall we go to? Mm. If we don't cry to you, who else shall we cry unto? If we don't put our case forward, to whom else shall we put our case forward to? And Father God, we have come to you. And your children have walked up front to you. Because you have life. You have sufficient grace. You have sufficient mercy. Please, Father. They have come to you. Please accept each one of them. Yes. Please release your power. Please fill each one of them with the power of the Holy Ghost yes. that can bring a true transformation and a true change that Lord will transform our Christian experience. And because they have come to you, Father God, accept each one of them and Lord, give each one of them victory over the matter that has compelled one to come before you. Father, thank you for you are more than willing to accept us for you are more than willing to give us a new beginning. For you are more than willing to give us victory that we need in our Christian experience. We have come to you. And if any forces that is holding us, tying us, in the name of Jesus Christ, destroy it and set us free. That Lord, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. That Lord, we may be warm church, warm members warm Christians, warm families that we may live for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for accepting each one of us. And thank you for baptizing us with the power of the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Father, for taking our weaknesses away. And thank you, Father, for forgiving us. And for, thank you, Father, for giving us a new beginning. Hold our hands now as we journey until that day. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.